Shalom Israel, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all honors and praises to Yahweh, Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba Hashem, Rekakadash. I want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for bringing out the 100% truth and keeping it real. Salutations to the 144 hopeful elect of Israel who's pushing this word in all truth and sincerity. And the one third of Israel who believe in the word and follow the land word for it. Shalom. Brothers and sisters, this is uh, going to be the fourth part of this epistle. Let it go. You know, coming back to the understanding that Yahweh Bashim Shai is the one true living God. You know, and he's in control of all this, you know, that we see around us. He made all these things that, you know, we see around us and we do, you know, his will every day, unbeknownst to us. You know, but the ones who we've called and chosen and given this understanding to, you know, we're, you know, um, it is his will that we come out here and, and, and uh, convey the message, you know, to the children of Israel, the so-called Negro, Hispanic, and Native American Indians, tell them to, to repent to the one true living God, to seek his face now, while there's, you know, while there's still time, while the gates of mercy are open, okay? Understand who the Lord really is, understand what his will is, you know, understand that he's about to come back and judge this wicked-ass kingdom, okay? That's, that's given into the hand of Esau Edom, the Caucasian race right now, who's running the world in all wickedness, running the world contrary to the words and the laws of Yahweh Bashim al Shai. Okay? He's got everybody worshiping a false god. You know, he's blaspheming the name of the Yahweh Bashim al Shai. He's blaspheming the name of the Lord, calling him something else, um, mingling the truth with lies, um, you know, uh, adding, adding false doctrines to the scriptures and everything uh, with this, uh, uh, having people celebrate these um, pagan holidays, you know, and they're nowhere to be found in the scriptures except to avoid them. You know, the children of Israel, this, these words are only for the so-called Negro, Hispanic, and Native American Indians, the, the lost 12 tribes of Israel, through the blood, bloodline of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, brothers and sisters. So that's what, that's what this word is coming out today. Um, so I, uh, mm, I forgot to delete those, uh, those previous videos. Hopefully uh, we'll have enough memory. But we're going to continue on. Uh, yesterday we, we ended the epistle with the book of uh, Ecclesiastics in the Apocrypha, chapter 33, verse 14. I want to just reiterate that one more time, man. 33, verse 14. Good is set, set against evil and life against death. So is the godly against the sinner and the sinner against the godly. So look upon the, all the works of the Most High, and there are two and two, one against another. So once again, uh, all these things are created of Yahweh Shema Shah. The Lord said, I create good and I create evil. So we're coming back to this understanding. That's why, uh, you know, we're now understanding these things and believing wholeheartedly in the word, in the scriptures of Yahweh Shema Shah. Because the Messiah said, I am the word. He's the word of Yahweh. Um, we're just throwing ourselves on the mercy of Yahweh Shema Shah, you know, hoping and praying that we are a part of this number, the 144 elect and one third of Israel, the ones that will, uh, that are sealed with that exemption of, of this upcoming destruction, this time of Jacob's trouble, where the Lord has uh, proclaimed that it's going to be a time like no other. You know, and all these things are evident of his mighty power. What we just read right here, you know, good is, good is set against evil. Good is, uh, one more time, Ecclesiastes chapter 33, verse 14, good is set against evil and life against death. So is the godly against the sinner and the sinner against the godly. So look upon all the works of the Most High, and there are two and two, two, two and two, one against another. Right, because that uh, promotes this great story that we're, we're living, man, this great, um, this epic story that Yahweh Hashem HaShem has created all around us, you know. You know, to the buildup of the of his kingdom being established on the earth, where dwelleth righteousness. Okay, so we have to suffer all these things, coming back to the understanding to the law, statutes, commandments, and now understanding the difference between good and evil, and to and we are hating that thing. We're we're shunning this this all this wickedness around us because we now we really understand that it is no good. It's bad. It's not good. Everything is turned upside down by this devil that Yahweh Shemashah has created. And, our, and, he's, and the devil is doing his will, you know, of the Most High. All right? Let's, let's continue on in the epistle. This is the book of Ecclesiastics. Oh, wait, wait. Salaki, brothers and sisters. I want to make sure, um, once again, after saying all that, that we understand the title of the epistle is Let It Go. So, therefore, 
knowing these things that are coming out that uh, you know that's being proclaimed on the highways and hedges by the elders and apostles of great millstone and all the other brothers on down this is the time to let it go and like i said throw your throw your all your cares and worries on your how about shimashi and beg him for mercy in these times you know seek his face start watching the videos of the elders and apostles of great millstone understand learn and understand what you must do you know, to please your how about Shema in this time and just beg the Lord for mercy. And that's what we're doing, man. That's all we're doing with, with these epistles. We're, we're walking in his ways now. Um, the Lord said, be holy for I am holy. He said, turn away from this wicked world. You know, have no part of it. All these things, you know, the 144 hopefully elect and one third of Israel are doing, you know, to try to get in good graces with your how about Shema Again, understanding that uh, the Messiah came and died for our sins. Yes. And we're by by grace. You know, and faith are we saved. It is not of works, you know, but we, you know, uh, as the, one more time, as the elder remnant saved, said the other day, man, and it makes all, hey, the, the, the 144 are going to be doing certain things, you know, in these last days as the, pro, as the prophecies proclaim. And the scriptures continue to tell you that they'll be found spotless and blameless, you know, without rebuke. Going back one more time, Captain Tazariak, without rebuke. That means, hey, man, if, you know, and uh, I, I, I wonder, has the, has, has, the, has the dude come out yet and, uh, and uh, repented? After all these rebukes that's, that's been coming out from the big brothers and elders of Great Millstone, you know, saying, telling them, hey, man, you must be ashamed of the word. Because when, when uh, Sarnella asked you those things, you know, you, 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 you didn't bring out the 100% truth. You didn't bring out the truth of the scriptures. Have you repented of that? That's, you know, that's some serious, th this is, these are serious things, you know, and the 144 elect of Israel, hopefully elect of one third of Israel, the scriptures say they're going to be found with no guile in their mouth, you know, without rebuke. And these, hey, man, that's why we're coming out here, you know, doing our very best to please Yahweh Hashem Hashem and doing what he has commanded us to do. Turn away from this wicked world. Set your house in order. You know, uh, seek out your own salvation with fear and trembling. All these things, brothers and sisters. Uh, I want to bring out this scripture here. In the book of uh, 2nd Ezra, chapter 14, verse 14. Now, one, once again, you know, uh, coming back to this understanding, I'm always looking for spiritual, looking, looking at trying to, you know, look at th things through spiritual lenses. So anytime I see 144, I'm like, yeah, that, what's, what's that? What's that saying? I, I, put, I put an extra ear to it, you know, even if I had three, if I had three ears, I, the other third ear would be over there, you know. But... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so this is uh, 2 Ezra chapter 14, verse 14. Let go from the mortal thoughts. So once again, let it go. Cast away the burdens of man. Put off now the weak nature and set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee. And hasten to flee from these times. For yes, greater evils than those which thou hast seen happen shall be done hereafter. For look how much the world shall be weaker through age, so much more shall evils increase upon them that dwell therein. For the truth is fled far away and, and leasing is hard at hand. For now hasten the vision to come which thou hast seen. Right, and as the scriptures say, um, um, you know, but mark this in the last days, you know, men's gonna be lovers of, of themselves and all these things, you know, I think that's in the book of First Timothy. Men's gonna be lovers of themselves you know everybody's heart's gonna wax wax cold uh and that's what we see right here man going on in these days there's gonna be wars and rumors of wars sedition of men all these things these are greater evils that's coming up on the earth right now okay so but let go from the mortal thoughts right so we are coming back and um putting on as the elect doing our very best to be more spiritual brothers and sisters looking at things through spiritual lenses and letting go as the scripture proclaimed once again, let go from the mortal thoughts, okay? Cast away the burdens of man. Put off now the weak nature because we understand that this time is a time of judgment. As the scriptures say, uh, the, righteous, the righteous man understandeth judgment. We understand that, hey, Yahweh Shem Hashai is not mocked. Whatever so, whatsoever a man sow, that shall he also reap. And the, and, the, and, the, and the word's been going out. The elders and apostles been on the been out there preaching this word for 30 years plus, okay? Warning the children of Israel. So when when the children when when the, when the when the ones that Yahweh Shemashah has called and chosen hear this word, they perk up. They take what they take notice to it, and they get themselves in order as the Scripture proclaims, as the prophecies dictate that they should do. 
right? But then the two-thirds of Israel, they're going to continue on in their damn wicked-ass ways. The rest of the world is going to shun this word that's going out. They're not going to take heed as well. They're not going to, you know, believe in this word because it's not for them. It's only this word is given for, to the children of Israel, first and foremost, right? But we're going to come out and we're going to do be doers of the word and not hearers only. We're going to take heed because these times, you know, are, are evil that's coming up on the earth. This is the time of great judgment. So we're going to put off these mortal thoughts, you know, cast away the burdens of man, putting off now the weak nature because we understand ultimately that everything is of the will of Yahweh Hashem Hashai. You know, and this weak nature to be, uh, oh, wait, no, what about the two-thirds? No, what about the other nature? No, because Yahweh Hashem, you're either with Yahweh Hashem Hashai, you're either with the word, you're on one accord with the word, or you're not. One period, point blank. It's right, cut and dry.